Kershaw Lucha is a fantastic budget Bella song, and the updated version is not that. Okay, so to be fair here, essentially, they made the Kershaw Lucha more expensive and then called it the same thing as the original while also changing literally everything about it from the blade to the handle construction to the fact that it's held together with a press fit. That's cool. The new version of the Lucha is actually an upgrade in a number of key ways. And so there is a lot of interesting stuff going on here. However, the whole idea of the original being a budget oriented live blade has kind of missed the mark now that all this fancy stuff is going on. So is this worth the new price tag of almost $300 when the original was only 130? By the way, we're comparing the old one to the new one, even though the old one is literally nothing like it, so we'll get into that. Now, before we get into talking about the unboxing experience of this thing, I wanna talk about the unboxing experience of our products. Now, at willhirsch.gay, we have brand new zip-up hoodies. They include my favorite design, the uh, Flipping Fox design, nice and big on the back in much better print quality than Teespring would have offered, but they have the added bonus feature of having a embroidered logo on the front. It's nice and soft, it's very comfortable, it's got uh, tight collars, so like if you're flipping, it's actually really nice to have a tight collar on the jacket. Check him out at willhirsch.gay. I'm back. Oh no. Oh! First up, we have the unboxing score. And honestly, this thing is fine. It's fine. It comes in a box. There are almost no other accessories. It's in like a little bit of like bubble wrap in the box. That's pretty much it. It's red and black, 10 out of 10. No, so that's gonna be a five for both. Next up is the tuning score. And this one is actually a very interesting one. So the original Lucha gets a seven out of 10 in terms of the tuning score. And this is for a good reason. It is on bearings, which requires a little bit of finesse, but you can get this thing to absolutely zero tap or zero play with a minimal amount of adjustment. You literally just kind of tighten the uh, screws a tiny bit and make sure you still have good swing, and then you're at the point of literally no play whatsoever. However, the CF Lucha has some problems. We gave the CF Lucha a five out of 10 in terms of its tuning performance, which is a whole two points lower than the original counterpart. Sure, it has the same pivot system, but to access the same screws that are here, they're still on the Lucha. They're still in there. They're just underneath this piece of carbon fiber. You might notice that there is in fact two screws here in the same spot that they are on the original. The problem here is when you need to take the latch off of this thing, which any flipper will do, by the way. It's not a good latch, it's a bad latch, it flops around like crazy, there's literally no reason to keep this latch on here. But here's the fun part. The other side, where the blade side is, there are no screws underneath the carbon fiber holding it together. On that side, the whole thing was held together with this, was holding the whole thing together because it was press fit into the handles. And that means when you're taking this thing apart, it's not as simple as just unscrewing some screws and it comes apart. Instead, you unscrew some screws and then you need to take some object and physically pry apart the handles to remove this tiny pin and liberate the latch. There are now scratches on the inside of the bite handle side of my handles because I had to literally pry them apart so hard that it scratched the handles. I heard that they potentially actually worked with flippers to design this thing, and that is an incredible oversight in that regard. At the same time, once you have removed the latch, now you actually have to take the screws that were on the safe side, I had to take two of them and put them onto the bite side because I only had four screws instead of the eight total that you're supposed to have because they didn't put any screws on the bite side. That is the only way to put this thing back together once you've removed the latch. And that severely impacts 
the tuning score. And this thing tunes much easier after you've done all of that. In fact, it probably would have gotten a seven or an eight. It has the bearing system and it's got this really cool inlaid stainless steel washer system inside of the titanium. That doesn't excuse the taking it apart part. So it gets a five. Next up is the durability score. And honestly, the original Lucha did a great job in this category. Its only weakness really was sand because this entire thing is made out of heavy duty steel. You could drop this on concrete and it would hurt the concrete. The CF Lucha, uh, it gets a six. And there's a few reasons for that. First of all, the titanium is obviously going to be less strong than just solid stainless steel, especially anodized titanium like this, which is blue. And as you start to drop it on the ground, will reveal nice silver scratch marks. These scales have a bit of a problem that all carbon fiber scales have, which is over time, as you drop them, carbon fiber has a tendency to splinter. So you do need to be careful when dropping something that has carbon fiber scales onto concrete in case they start to shatter or crack. I will say during our testing and the filming of this thing, I did drop it on concrete a couple of times. And honestly, I'm impressed at how resilient the carbon fiber is because not all carbon fiber is made the same. So that is impressive, but it's still a word of warning. And so in terms of the durability, it's fine, but it's not quite built as tough as the original, nor is it built quite as Ford tough as Brandon himself. Ooh, yeah. By the way, if you wanna keep the delicate carbon fiber of your brand new Lucha nice and safe, you should get a case from cases.wilhirsch.gay. I threw this one into the ocean and it was fine. But one of the reasons I was okay with doing that was because of this desiccant packet, which you can purchase alongside the cases. They absorb all of the ambient humidity that gets in your case. And so even if you do hurl your case into the ocean and it happens to get a tiny bit of water inside, this will keep it nice and safe. But if you do want water in your Balasong case, try a mug from willhirsch.gay. Oh wait, no. So in terms of the flipping, the original Lucha got a five out of 10. We consider it to be a pretty average experience when flipping. It's almost six ounces at 5.9, and that is a lot. This guy, on the other hand, is right around exactly five ounces. It's a lot lighter than the original, and that actually plays in a lot while flipping. As a matter of fact, this thing flips substantially better than the original Lucha. I really, really like how this thing flips when I get going enough with it. When I first got it out of the box, it wasn't the most impressive thing in the world to me, but when you go back to the original Lucha, you can see how far it has come in such a short period of time. However, all that glitters is not gold, and the problems of this thing come down to the blade. You see, the original Lucha blade has a very nice profile to it that is pretty distinct. The new blade is spear point. When you're flipping a balisong, one of the most important things that you need to keep track of is which side is going to hurt you at any given time. Now, when you have a blade like this, it becomes very easy to do that just by looking at it for half a moment and you can tell, ah yes, I am now holding the bite side of the blade. However, because of the spear point nature of this blade, it is exactly the same on both sides in silhouette. And because of this, I've actually had it mixed up before and almost given myself a ring of shame while flipping this thing. So the actual flipping is better, but the blade means that I'm actually kind of hesitant to use it to its full potential because if I'm flipping at full speed, one of the things I don't wanna do is have to stop and take a look at what side of the blade I'm on. However, the blade aspect here isn't the end of the world. And as a matter of fact, there's a lot of other good things that make the flipping experience nice here, like the grip. The carbon fiber adds a great spot for you to grip and feels very good in the hand, giving the knife a sort of weirdly square but round vibe, whereas the original Lucha was pretty much exclusively square. This guy also has a lot of grip on the sides. A lot of channel design balisongs are 
nice, but have a failure to have a lot of grip because you either need jimping or you're just gonna have a big slab where your fingers will slide off. This doesn't have that problem because it's sandwich. Alongside that, the balance is honestly interesting. I would say it's very slightly blade biased, but not so much that it's actually bad in any particular way. Normally, I don't like blade bias knives really at all, but this thing is shockingly good even with that slight bit of bias. Comparatively, this thing is insanely handle biased, so like, it's a welcome change. It's much closer to neutral, I would say. At the end of the day, Kershaw did a lot to make this thing flip better than the original, and I think that it's very commendable that they are moving in the right direction. But there's a couple things, that blade being a big part of it, that introduce a few bumps along the road that uh, aren't exactly making their process a smooth one. And that's why the CF Lucha gets an eight out of 10 in terms of its flipping score. In terms of availability, the CF Lucha and the original Lucha, they both get a 10. Kershaw is a massive manufacturer of USA made knives. And honestly, the fact that you can buy these at many major retailers is an awesome boon for the Balasong hobby in general. So the fact that something that flips this good is available that easy is great, but it comes with a few things you need to learn along the way. I heard dinner. Oh. <laughs> all right, so now we're gonna bring it all down to earth and back into the value score. The original Lucha got a seven out of 10, and that's highly due to its price being $130 while still being a fantastic EDC option. This thing isn't the best flipper in the world, but it certainly is a fantastic starting place and a really good EDC if you're looking for a knife to carry around with you. We took a look at a number of different ballast songs in this price range to kind of get an idea of what we're actually dealing with when you're spending almost $300. And one of the first ones we looked at was the BRS Replicant. The Replicant is honestly a very similar offering from BRS that has been around longer. It has sandwich construction with titanium liners and G10 or carbon fiber scales. So it's got a very similar construction even though it's on bushings as compared to bearings. So by looking at the Replicant and a few other Balasongs in this price range, we managed to narrow in on what we thought was a better value proposition for this guy. And that score would be a five out of 10 because, well, we determined this thing has relatively average value. It doesn't have all of the bells and whistles that you would expect from certain other products, but it does have a lot going for it for the price. For instance, the Replicant does start at $270, but the carbon fiber version is much more expensive than that. And so this with its carbon fiber and titanium actually doesn't seem like that bad of a deal when you look at it properly. Alongside that, the actual construction of this thing is shockingly nice with really beautiful machining around a lot of the parts of it. This is more than double the price of this. And if the whole idea was to bring something that had an incredibly good value proposition to the table, this didn't quite hit that mark. Both Brandon and I agree that we would rather flip the Flytanium version of the Lucha than this. And this costs less when you include both buying an original Lucha and upgrading it to these. Alongside that, the Talisong Z is another great example of where your money could go and get a better flipping experience. One of the reasons the original Lucha got such a great value score is because of our thoughts of it as a modding platform. With this guy, there's a number of problems that it just has to overcome. And unfortunately, the tuning experience is simply one of the myriad of issues alongside the carbon fiber scales and the scale system that just make this thing a lot less moddable than this guy. The original Lucha and honestly the Replicant are both fantastic modding platforms. This one is a modded Replicant right here. I mean, it's so easy to mod and it's such a old modding platform that there's a ton of stuff available for it already. This one has just missed the boat in terms of that opportunity due to its myriad of issues. Sure, it is technically moddable in the largest air quotes that I can muster, but 
I still don't know if it's actually ever going to catch on as a platform, at least not nearly as much as the Replicant or the original. And so we come to a close here with the CF Lucha. As you can see, here are the aggregated scores all together, nice in a neat little row. Very nice, the uh, CF Lucha got a 39, which is pretty good. Uh, it's not quite as good as this guy, which got a 42. All in all, I just wanted to say thank you so much to Kershaw for sending this thing to be looked at for review. Honestly, it is very impressive that they're, you know, willing to send this to a reviewer like us that, you know, we could have some strong opinions on it and potentially kind of thrash it a little bit like we did. So very brave of them for doing that. However, I do want to say that this is very much a step in the right direction for Kershaw, especially after the original Lucha. I think the original Lucha is a fantastic offering for the price. And if Kershaw could create something that feels this nice, and flips this good, but fixes a couple of the other issues and maybe is made entirely out of titanium instead of titanium and carbon fiber and costs a little bit less, you know, more than this, less than that. You might have a middle Lucha, like a cute little middle child. That would be perfect. Mm, okay, mm, uh, mm, this is not what we meant. This is the Kershaw Moon Salt. Yeah, it's in the middle in terms of price, but it's heavier than the Lucha, and it has the same latch, and the blade is spear point again, and it has the same exact materials as the Lucha. It looks like you made some really cool handles, but then you took the warp tool in Photoshop and just... Okay, but for real, we haven't flipped it yet. We'll see. I hope it's good, but on paper... This is not what any of us wanted. Thank you so much, Kershaw, for sending us this for review. I'm very excited as to what you're gonna be doing in the future because the entire Lucha lineup has been incredibly exciting for a number of reasons. But please, dear Lord, if you make a new version of this and it's completely different than this, don't give it the same name. The I've else. been calling this the Nucha, but this won't be the Nucha forever. It will be the... Cha. Distant cousin Cha. Oh. Thank you so much to all of the patrons that support us. You guys really do make each one of these videos possible. So thank you so much for your incredible support. It seriously means the world to us. Like, I, I can't... I can't even describe how much it means to us, so thank you. But that's pretty much it for the moment. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go figure out which is best. The Lucha, the Lucha, the Lucha, or the Lucha. There can only be one! <laughs>